climate change, a possible reality that we all fear but need to face, has been a global concern. The latest global risk report by the World Economic Forum has indicated that failure to act on climate change is a top ranked threat to the world and it brings severe consequences over the next decade. Extreme weather and biodiversity loss, both closely related with climate change, makes up the top three in the list after climate action failure. While many nations are pledging to take action to reduce climate change, all these commitments and efforts are not expected to be able to meet the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal established in the Paris Climate Agreement. The latest nationally determined contributions, or NDC, to the covenants made in COP26 is expected to only be able to result in 1.8 degrees Celsius world, and that is if every target's implementation comes into fruition. As the climate system experiences shifts in its normal condition due to the needs and demands of humankind, changes occur in how it operates. These changes bring impact to the Earth's ability to sustain itself and its inhabitants. While both developed and developing nations are making commitments to combat climate change, many efforts and targets are disorderly, and gaps could be seen between nature countries and their poorer counterparts. One example of the latter is Malaysia. While it is one of the most largest economies in Southeast Asia, there are still gaps that keep it from being labelled as a developed country globally. In pursuing growth of its economy, Malaysia needs to maintain various service and industrial sectors, one of it being construction. Today, I'm going to primarily dive into the climate current and future of Malaysia and look at how the construction sector in the country influences climate change and in turn, how the sector is at risk of being impacted by it. You are watching The Natural Choice. Malaysia is a tropical nation in Southeast Asia, commonly known by foreign parties for landmarks such as the Petronas Twin Towers or KLCC, Mount Kinabalu, the temples in Batu Caves, and many more. The nation has a population of around 32 million as of 2019 and is one of the most developed economies in the region. The economy of the country centers on the service sector, making up 84.5% of the national GDP followed closely by manufacturing at 23% of the national GDP. The country features diverse land cover and topography, including coastlines, mountain ranges, and more than 50% forest cover. It is located at the equator, where it experiences hot and humid weather conditions throughout the year. The country is separated into Peninsula Malaysia, or West Malaysia, and East Malaysia. Climatic conditions differ between Peninsula and East Malaysia, the latter due to stronger effect of maritime weather. The country has two monsoon seasons, Southwest Monsoon from April to September and Northeast Monsoon from October to March. Malaysia has a mean annual temperature of 25.4 degrees Celsius and mean annual precipitation of 3085.5 mm. There's not much seasonal variability in average monthly temperature, with one degree difference between the minimum and maximum temperatures shown in the chart. The same condition applies to precipitation with values that are constant throughout the year. Malaysia, while located near the equator, is also exposed to impact or risk due to changing climate. Before we delve specifically into Malaysia, let's revisit some brief facts about climate change. Climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. These shifts may be natural, such as through variations in the solar cycle. However, since the 1800s, which is the start of the fossil fuel era, climate change has been driven by human activities. Burning of fossil fuel creates gases, including greenhouse gases or GHG. These are gases that absorb radiation and transmits them as heat due to molecular vibration created in the absorption process. One of the most prominent GHG in our ecosystem is carbon dioxide or CO2. Atmospheric CO2 level measurements show the rising trend as compared to baseline level of 280 parts per million or ppm in 0 AD. Many observations and measurements made support this trend. One of it involves a chart topping figure of 415 ppm found by the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii. Real-time atmospheric readings recorded a figure of 417.29 ppm in 2022 and 419.15 ppm in 2023, which means there's a rise of 0.45% in the past year. To put this into perspective, the last time atmospheric CO2 were at this level, there were no humans around. Warmer or colder temperature, depending on where you reside, leads to rising sea level. 
from thermal expansion of water and melting ice, subsequent flooding, massive drought or abnormal patterns of rainfall, heat waves and other possible climate impacts. And these impacts can be very detrimental towards the sustainability and ultimately survival of humanity over the next century. The fifth assessment report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or IPCC indicates that Malaysia will experience an increasing average temperatures. Business as usual scenario or RCP 8.5 emission pathway will lead to an increase of 3.4 degrees Celsius by 2090s. Meanwhile, the most stringent mitigation scenario, where all climate actions and targets are fully met, known as RCP 2.6, will lead to a jump of 0.9 degrees Celsius. Precipitation projections are more uncertain, but an increasing trend could be seen in majority of their models. So, what are the climate-related risks that can occur in Malaysia due to this climate future? Earlier, we touched on how a rise in greenhouse gas level can lead to warmer temperatures and also changes in the climate systems. So how does this relate to flood? Rising sea level and increased frequency and intensity of rainstorm are the main factors behind occurrence of floods, which can be river flood, coastal flood or flash flood. The nature of each of these floods differ based on the location and factors behind its occurrence. River flood occurs when water level in a river body or similar waterway rises due to excessive rainfall and overflows to land. Flash flood, on the other hand, is independent of a water body and usually occurs when urban drainage system is overwhelmed by torrential rain or when water is suddenly released from high elevation or terrain such as a dam. Coastal flood, meanwhile, occurs when land along the coastline gets inundated by water. Storm surge happens when strong wind forces water on shore usually in the event of cyclones or typhoon. The strong wind coupled with high tide can lead to flooding on low-lying land and bring devastating damage to the population within the area. Thus, rising sea level can increase the intensity and impact of this event. Flooding is an event Malaysia is vulnerable to, resulting in more damage than any other natural hazard the country faces. Flood events has increased in terms of frequency and severity over the last few decades and is expected to increase with continued global warming. Studies show that most Asian nations may face an increase in the frequency of extreme river flows, even under the more stringent emissions pathway of the Paris Climate Agreement. A flow that could have occurred once every 100 years could come sooner, such as in 50 or even 25 years in most parts of Asia. Scenario modeling also predicts an increase in the intensity of extreme rainfall events with potential increases in the volume of water deposited over 5 days in the range of 8 to 32% by the 2090s. This projection suggests an increased possibility of flash flooding and also associated hazards such as landslide. Climate change is expected to interact with cyclone hazard in complex ways which are currently poorly understood while the increase in surface temperature of the ocean is evidently leading to stronger cyclones and increased wind speed, the theory is limited by the nuance in how these cyclones are measured in terms of power and category. Globally, modeling of the effect of climate change on cyclone intensity and frequency shows a general trend of reduced occurrence but increased intensity and frequency of the most extreme events. Malaysia, although located quite near to the Northwestern Pacific Tropical Cyclone Basin, rarely experiences tropical cyclones as it is located near the equator, of which a distance away from is a prerequisite for a cyclone to power up. Nonetheless, some parts of the country do experience storm surge of which the frequency and intensity is expected to increase, along with other countries in Southeast Asia due to climate change. Malaysia commonly experiences high maximum temperatures, on average, experiences an annual maximum of daily maximums of around 33 degrees Celsius. Generally, the temperature trend in Malaysia is consistent. The current median probability of a heat wave is not significant at around 2 percent. However, expected increase due to warming trend brought by climate change, based on modeling under RCP 8.5 emissions pathway, shows that by 2090s, this number increases dramatically to 93 percent. Heat waves are defined as anomalous high temperatures. This change in dynamics will enable regular occurrence of what would be considered heat wave conditions. Simultaneously, Malaysia also faces probability of facing a transition to chronic heat stress conditions. Under RCP 
The average daily maximum temperatures shows the possibility of surpassing 33 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. In addition, the annual maximum of daily maximums climbs to 34 to 37 degrees Celsius by the 2090s across the different emission pathway. So how bad is this scenario? Humans can stand a wet bulb temperature of below 35 degrees Celsius, of which a temperature above it would lead to heat stroke due to the heat and humidity. So it is pretty bad. Malaysia primarily experiences two types of droughts, which are meteorological due to precipitation deficit and hydrological due to a deficit in surface and subsurface water flow. Currently, Malaysia faces an annual median probability of severe meteorological drought of around 4%. As defined by a standardized precipitation evaporation index or SPEI of less than minus 2. As Malaysia is exposed to El Nino events, areas such as the Kelantan River Basin are affected by severe droughts. Severe drought can potentially lead to low productivity of agriculture and aquaculture, as well as negative effects on freshwater supply and industrial sectors. Studies show that compared to West and Central Asia, it is less likely for Southeast Asia to encounter significant jumps in drought intensity. However, increases are still expected. Projections on the all emissions pathways show different possibilities of having a year with a severe drought by the 2090s, with the probability roughly doubling from 4% to 9% for RCP 2.6 and 8% for RCP 8.5 emissions pathways, as shown on the chart. Now, Let's take some time for a little background story on the construction sector in Malaysia. Construction comes in many forms, but generally gets categorized into building or civil constructions. This includes developing infrastructures such as highways and rail systems, townships, commercial and residential buildings, and many more. The sector provides economic push by creating job opportunities as well as driving the ability to allow societal needs and demands to be made. So how does the sector influence climate change? Energy use for heavy machinery and wood operations require fossil fuel and electricity consumption. Most heavy machinery runs on diesel or petrol, while many construction processes consume electricity from the national grid, many of which are still coal-powered. The process led to emissions of CO2 as the fuel are burned to power up these machineries or provide electricity. Options for heavy machineries that are battery operated or electrified is still not locally available. Another aspect is the raw material processing and installation needed for the sector to run. Construction in Malaysia is still heavily dependent on concrete, cement and steel, which are materials that consume a large amount of energy to extract and produce. The consumption of these energies are similar to the construction machineries, dependent on fossil fuels which emits greenhouse gas and affect the climate as a result. Wastes from construction activities can also contribute to greenhouse gas emission through operation of landfills to contain this waste. Processing the waste requires energy consumption and leads to emission of CO2, apart from methane from the decomposition of organic materials. Clearing of forests or trees to allow the development to occur reduces the carbon capture and sequestration process and creates a condition where carbon that was supposed to be stored ends up returning into the atmosphere. Based on the report by International Energy Agency or IEA in 2021, construction sector accounts for 39% of the global CO2 emission, which is a large enough footprint for the sector to be concerned about. What does all this information mean to the sector? What can happen to these businesses if they fail to contain the influences that they have on climate change? Let's dive in. Sea level rise is expected to occur in Malaysia's climate future, leading to high frequency of coastal or inland flooding. Existing products may lose value, prospective products may face decrease in number due to decrease in demands, or higher competition from lesser footprint to work with, as cities become less inhabitable or infrastructures are frequently impacted by flood. For instance, a township developed in Klang or even Kota Kuning area faces the risk of being submerged in water as annual flood event brought upon by sea level rise occurs more regularly. Climate Tools shows flood occurrence of severity of 1 in 25 years can lead up to 0.5 meters of inundation, while 100 years can lead to 0.5 to 0.7 meters of inundation in a business as usual scenario. Spike of temperature to extremities can affect the human health among the workforce involved in the sector. It can also damage the end products or even deter works in progress. Higher intensity of storm and increasing wind speed can create hazardous work conditions, 
and not to mention damages to properties and infrastructures. Idling time and slow progression can impact the business over the long run. While physical impact brought by drought may not be directly impactful to the sector, the water stress arising from drought events can be a huge problem, as the resource is dependent upon heavily within the sector's processes. I admit that most of the impact on construction sector that I've highlighted relates to the profitability of businesses, which is something most Malaysian conglomerates are still prioritizing due to the economic downturn that is driven by global and local forces. However, it needs to be pointed out this way so that businesses could see that while prioritizing profit may seem good to sustain their business in the near future, it only delays the impact of potential failure should they choose to ignore all these warning signs. Most of all, it might bite back sooner and they won't even get to enjoy the success for long before the impact occurs. The reality is, without doing anything, or choosing one over the other, both the climate and businesses are doomed to fail. There must be balance in approaching the fight over climate change and the impact it brings. Balance in true sense would mean intersecting goals between survivability of business, the earth, and the people living in it, and not letting go of any of them in favour of the other. While this narrative on a single sector may be small, compared to the overall picture where many nations and multi-industries are involved, it is still a material concern. Efforts, no matter how big or small, is crucial in fighting this doomsday scenario that climate change brings. The natural choice is to stay focused and keep these efforts up. I'd like to take some time to show my gratitude and give credit to the owners of my source of information for this video. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you've all gained some insight from today's show. Uh, with that, I bid you farewell. Goodbye.